Hello everyone and welcome to another video. We're going to talk about Chinese today. We're going to be running through a full guide on how to play Chinese. So if you're new to Chinese, this is going to be the perfect way to start. And if you are into Chinese, but there's some things you'd like to improve on or understand, this is also a great guide for you. So I hope you enjoy it. We're going to talk about taxes and officials and give you the data on that, how it works and the best way to play them. Uh, dynasties, we're going to talk about compositions, both in the early game, mid game and the late game. And then I'm going to run you through second TCs and the food costs. And lastly, I'll run you through the first safe opener, which is the build order that I use in standard modes. Then there's the 2TC song, how to get a good 2TC song timing. And then the fast song timing. So there's going to be three build orders included at the end of this video as well. So stick around for those as well. You can jump through with the timestamps in the description. And uh, yeah, all the links will be in the description as well. So I hope you enjoy this video. The most important part of the Chinese civilization is the tax system. The tax system is every time a village drops off a resource on a drop-off point like the mill, like the lumber camp, you're going to generate one tax. If you drop it off and the lumber camp or mill is within the influence of the Imperial Academy, you gain double that, so two tax. If you are researching a technology like survival techniques or wheelbarrow, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to get 32 tax. It's a baseline for all of the technologies. It also goes for the unit upgrades like the veteran upgrade or hardened upgrade. And so every time you research, it's 32 gold and it's doubled if it's under influence. Every time you make a unit, it's four gold for making that unit and it's eight for uh, the uh, influence. The Imperial officials will be collecting all of your taxes, and that's why you always want to have an Imperial official free to roam around and gather all those taxes. The Imperial officials can also supervise. They supervise drop-off points, and they supervise production buildings or technology buildings like the Blacksmith and University. If you are supervising a barracks, keep in mind that you're not gaining extra resources. That's why we prefer to put them on the drop-off points like lumber camps, because you gain extra wood and you can use that wood to make more production. That's how you want to think about it. Don't supervise extensively on the production buildings. Do it on the lumber camps, for example, to make more production buildings. So I want to talk about the dynasties as well. It's a core mechanic in the Chinese civilization that you have the dynasties. You start off in Dark Age with the Tang Dynasty. In Feudal Age, you have the Song Dynasty, Yuan Dynasty for Castle Age, and Ming for Imperial Age. Basically, to get a dynasty, you have to age up twice. So you have to go double Feudal Age to get the Song Dynasty. In Tang Dynasty, and this applies for all the dynasties, of course, in the Tang Dynasty, you have 30% increase of line of sight. It's good for getting mills and scouting. In the Song Dynasty, you have an increased production speed, which makes it so that your villages are produced within 15 seconds instead of 20. And so you can get a, a, a good mill lead against a, a 1TC opponent. If you are in Yuan Dynasty, and this is the best dynasty, in my opinion, for mid-late game, you can get the increased movement speed, which is the same as the Yam movement speed, but it applies across the entire civilization. So all your villagers, officials, and military units will increase their movement speed, and your economy will work a lot faster. So try to get to this one, even if you're an Imperial. Then you have the Ming Dynasty. Military units gain 10% health. Not really relevant. Not really that good. You have buildings like the village, good for the struggle tree opener. You get 40% extra population. You save 25 wood. You have the granary, good for... Uh, farm drop off and then you have the pagodas pagodas are great because they work in a similar fashion as uh the relics inside of tithe barn inside of monasteries with tithe barns do and so you have a relic in here you get 100 gold per minute and 150 other resources you'll need the same with a regnitz 3 uh relic um hre player with tithe barns to make up for three pagodas so these are incredibly important in the late game and will gain you a lot of resources try to get these up if you play late game right and then we have some units we have the shugenu everybody knows shugenus they're really strong for spamming and uh yeah you can finish off a lot of games early with them you have Phylances, good for sniping, good for killing siege, good for killing villagers. And then you have Main Dynasty, which is Grenadiers. They've been changed, so they have a different attack value, which is siege damage. siege damage. You can try to use them, but they're really expensive. I recommend going for a different composition than something with Grenadiers. But I guess for defending on top of walls, they should be good. Alright, now here's the big one. And this is for the mid and late game. We're going to talk about compositions. The best composition that the Chinese can work towards is going to be Palace Guards and the Hand Cannoneers. The reason this is so good is because of the upgrades, 
pyrotechnics, which increase the range of hand cannons by 1.5. It makes it so that the hand cannons snipe siege really well, and you can stand at safer distances and fire with them. The palace guards will benefit greatly from all of the upgrades, of course, so will all the units. But you also should get elite army tactics, and then with the Yuan movement speed here, these guys will be insanely fast. It will be the fastest unit in the game when they charge to an attack. And so uh, you can use these to just flood your enemy unit, in, enemy units, uh, enemy civilizations in Imperial. So that's definitely recommended. Then you have other compositions like the Fire Lances. They're not really good for fighting, so you should uh, include something like Hand Cannoneers when you are uh, using them. Otherwise, use them for sniping landmarks and harassing. You have compositions that are a little bit less heavy on the resource side, which would be spearmen, crossbow comps, for example. They will deal with most stuff if you have siege combined with them. So that's recommended. And then I would say hand cannons and uh, grenadiers can work together well. They're good for grouped units, but they're not good against something like archers and so on um, or other siege units. So it's a good idea to con include siege comps in general with the grenadiers otherwise use them defensively as i spoke about before in some games it can be a good idea to go for two town centers if you want to play for late game mid game or just want to create a good middle lead two town centers is really food heavy it'll require you to have at least 11 villages on sheep 13 villages on berries and for comparison a three town center a basset player that has fresh foodstuffs only needs seven berry bills to uh sustain constant village production so think about that when you are going for two town centers can you sustain it because most likely you will need to also make a farm transition to keep on making villages and army units at the same time two town centers is good but one town center can really do the job as well because 15 second villages means that you're going to be gaining more villages than your opponent on one town center will and so even though you're defending for a long time in feudal or you're in castle or whatever, you're going to get more villages than somebody who is not on uh, two town centers. So the first build order we'll be looking at is going to be the Chinese safe opener. It's a one TC opener and it's how you win games with one town center. This is specifically good against somebody who's going to apply a lot of feudal pressure as uh, so you can compete against them with this uh, build order. We're going to start off with the straggler tree opening, which I'm going to explain now. You're going to send your first six villages onto a straggler tree queue an imperial official and then before they drop the wood that they collect from the first trip to the town center you instead interrupt that build a mill and then the imperial official will supervise the mill you'll get the 20 percent extra uh, resources so that's 12 extra wood and then they'll start to go on food it's really important that you don't shift click afterwards so that they are uh, commanded to go somewhere else because then they won't drop off the resources i'm going to show it to you now the villagers will collect the wood. I have, I have queued the official and sent the sheep to where I want my mill to be, which will be preferably towards the wood line here. And I have a really good spawn because I have gold and I can put the barbican here and cover it. All right, so they're going to go back. Instead, they build the mill. I supervise with the imperial official. I haven't shift queued anything, but they're going to automatically go to the sheep. I get the 72 wood and now I can build a village, which is really good if you want to uh, gain extra population early on okay so for this build order and by the way you can follow along in the description there is a, a link to it so you can use it in your own games the seventh villager will be going to the gold and he will build a house and a mining camp there you go these two guys will build a house and a mining camp the next two villagers will go to the food and after that you're going to send three villagers over to wood it's important that you Take a look at the taxes, like I explained before. Every time they reach 40, which is the max carry capacity at this point for Imperial officials, you take all your villagers, you right-click on the mill, shift-click back to the uh, sheep, you take the official, and then he picks up the tax, goes back to the uh, town center, and then you shift-click him back to supervising the mill. It's a little bit micro-intensive on the eco front, but if you get it right, you can gain so many more resources than your opponent. You can see we're at 39 here. In a second, he'll be taking the resources and going back. We're building the lumber camp. We're going to send three villages in total over there because we want to get that wood extra so we can build a production building. We are up against the French, so we are expecting uh, the French player to make um, uh, 
knights, and so we want a barracks to make spears to counter the knights. You saw it just before there, Imperial official moves back to the town center, right back at supervising. But now, when we have three in wood, we're going to go back to rallying onto the food. And we're going to keep on doing that until we have Song Dynasty, which means two of the landmarks. The Imperial Academy and the Barbican of the Sun. Though, when you've built the Imperial Academy, I recommend that you take two villagers off the mill. Put them on the wood line if you're under pressure. Because then you'll have five on wood and you'll get the barracks out quicker. Which will make it so that you aren't... So you are able to defend against possible night raids. When the Imperial Academy finishes, you're going to be constructing immediately an Imperial official that is going to collect taxes from now on. Another house needs to be constructed. And then you're working towards getting a barracks and three spearmen. Because three spearmen will take out a knight. Um, yes. Back to supervising. You have five on wood. Now you're building the barracks. Now we just want to get as much food as possible. The three spearmen and the upgrade for the spearmen. We're going to get 64 gold from the upgrade because it's under the Imperial Academy influence. So already there, the upgrade pays itself back. You're actually getting more total resources than if you didn't go for it. So... You're going to go and supervise it and then take the resources from the barracks. When we have three spearmen, we're going to drop down the barbican here. It's going to secure us our wood line, our mill, our gold, and the berries here. So we want to drop it right here. That's a good spot. Then your opponent can't really charge you as well, and they're going to take shots from the hand cannons. It's important that you have the spearmen here to defend against the, um, the knights that will come. As you can see, I've scouted that a knight and an archer is coming, which is a problem since I need horsemen now to take out the uh, archer. I'm going to need to micro the villagers a little bit here, get the spearmen out, and then deny the uh, the villager kill there. Barbican is up, and now I can go back to wood and food and focus on getting units out because I can see he went for a fast archery range, which means I'll need to get horsemen and spearmen to counter, which means I'm making a stable, I have my barracks, and now it's time to pump units. This is the point in the game where you can decide what you want to do. If it's another game where you're not under as much pressure, you can go for a second town center. You can use the 2TC song build, which I'm going to show you next. And uh, therefore, if you're playing a more boomy game, you can go for second town center. You can also, if you are in a game where you need to go for a fast song dynasty to get Shugenus out and you want to be the aggressor, you can use the fast song build, which I'm going to show you after the 2TC song build. So, enjoy. So, for the 2TC song build, which is going to be around 6 minutes and 10 seconds timing for the 2TC and the song to be finished, we are going to go with the same straggler tree opening that I explained before in the recent build order, just before this one. So, I'm going to skip ahead past that. So, they did the straggler tree thing. The first villager we make after the Imperial official, he will go and build a village just below here because we're going to build our Imperial Academy up here. So we will build our village down here so we don't take up more than one tile of space from the Imperial Academy influence. So the villager here will then after go to the straggler tree and he'll chop three wood. You can over chop a little bit. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is you get the three wood so you get 50 wood in your bank over here. Then you rally in the meantime to food, so you get eight food villages, and then you go to gold, so you have three. This guy will now go build the mining camp, and you'll rally two villages over to gold. It looks like this. You have eight over here. Here comes two villages. Let's speed it up a little bit. Remember to do your tax. So keep getting the tax returns over here. Now you have three. You keep rallying back onto food. Very simple. To gold, three. Back to food. Keep getting sheep over there so you can sustain this mill opening. So if you run out of food here, you have a big problem. So you have to go and scout safely first around your base to get those safe sheep. Now we can age up. We're going to age up with the Imperial Academy first. We'll build it right beside our mill, closest to the wood line. Here we can still get stone, berries, and the wood line. And the village just take up more than one tile of space. So, this is a very good position. <clears throat> we are now going to get the last resources that we need 
for the Barbican. And so that includes getting the tax here, taking the gold here, and then keep on running to food. We're going to be getting the Barbican up before this Imperial Academy finishes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the three gold villages now and then pop the Barbican over here. You can pop it over here as well or further out on the deer. Then we take five food villages, put them on the straggler tree. The rest of the food villages will go to the wood line and this will sync up so that you can make a lumber camp when these guys have chopped down the first few trees. So that's why we're going to the straggler trees with five villages. If you go with four, you're going to ruin it and it's not going to be synced up. These guys will go back, not get any tax and they'll drop off at the TC. So we're going to keep on rallying until we have 12 on wood. We make an imperial official and then we gather the wood we need now to go and get the mining camp afterwards. So now this guy supervises the lumber camp. These guys here will go to the mining camp. And then from there, when you have seven on wood, you'll start rolling onto the stone. These guys here will finish the barbican, go to the stone. You'll be supervising the lumber camp and the mining camp only, as you'll be getting the most resources that way. We keep rallying until we have 11 on stone, then we start rallying to food. The reason we run into food is because we want to bank a little bit of food before we get our second town center up, so we don't have any idle time on it. So, we are approaching 6 minutes and 10 seconds. Sometimes it'll be faster, sometimes it'll be a little bit slower. Depends on your spawn, depends on how uh, you execute the build order. But, around this timing, we'll drop down our second town center right here. The reason we don't drop it on the deers is because we want the tax. So, since deer give tax, and though they don't give as much tax as, for example, sheep do, we still want to get the increased food returns as well from supervising the deer camp uh, mill. And so having a safe town center like this is best. It is purposely only for the Chinese that you put TCs like this instead of on the uh, resources for the pop space inside the town center. And so it's for the taxes, of course, it's for the increased returns. Right. That's pretty much the build order from here on out. Take the game uh, and do what it with it what you like. Be play reactionary. You're gonna play a little bit defensive because you have to build up an economy. The goal of the two TC is to get a good enough economy to overwhelm your opponent on later. If they go for a fast castle, if they go for high amounts of aggression early on, try to take you out. Use your defensive capabilities. Make a lot of units and uh, try to see if you can't uh, deal with it. So yeah. And that concludes our Chinese guide. I hope you've enjoyed this guide. And if you have, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions as well, leave them down below. Check out the links that are in the description. They're very helpful. There will be the production calculator. There will be the Twitch stream and the build orders. So check them out. They're very useful. I use them myself all the time. If you uh, want to check out my Twitch, be sure to say hi and uh, leave a follow in there. And uh, yeah, have a good one until next time.